Hey, how's it going? You are watching the Etch Play weekly live show, episode 66. It is December 16th, 2021. We've nearly made it to the end of the year. We're so close, I can taste it. I can literally taste it because I've been eating Christmas themed food. Um, thanks for joining us. We are, as ever, recapping all the latest things happening from the world of games today on the show. I've got a little throwback for you in this week's pre recorded segment, which is our video. Uh, you actually get to see me in that from last year. You see how much I've changed over the course of 12 months. You see the light in my eyes starting to fade. Uh, <laughs> and then later on in the show, we'll be joined by Ben Joy to talk about the best selling games of 2021. But, as I said, our first segment is the news, and I'm joined for that by Taya. Taya, how's it going? It's going super good. Thanks, Adam. Are you excited for Christmas? I cannot verbally describe my feelings of excitement <laughs> right now. <laughs> so that's a no, then. <laughs> oh, no words. No, no, no. I'm so excited, I cannot Okay, you're too excited. Explain. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello in the chat to Ben Gammon and to Miles. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We appreciate your time. Um, let's talk about some news, shall we? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, let. Oh, my computer's gone crazy. Why is this happening during the show? It's the worst <laughs> possible time for it to happen. Um, me to start us off. Boom, there we go. And now I'm back. Uh, first off, we're saying congratulations to Joseph Fares and all of the team at Hazelight. Uh, it Takes Two last Thursday became the official Game Awards Game of the Year. Um, so, congratulations to them. Wonderful to see an indie team win the award and for an indie game to get that much prestige is fantastic. It's great news for you know the industry and for indies in general to have that kind of cut through. Um, you can see a bit of the game in the background there. The show also featured a number of trailers and reveals. We've highlighted some of those. Uh, the most interesting ones, actually, you can find on our Roundup blog from last Friday. Uh, which you can find at uk.com forward slash play. So if you're interested in watching some of the best trailers, reading some opinions about them, you can check that out after the show, obviously. Uh, we are gearing up to do some Games of the Year coverage ourselves, actually, uh, asking the staff and friends of, the, friends of the team here at Etch to pick out the best titles of 2021. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for more information next week. Uh, but Ty, happy about this? Happy about the result? Super happy. I've heard some really good things about this game. I haven't played it myself yet, but it's definitely number one on my list. And you like you say, it... <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Like it takes you've got to, like you've got to find a second person to play the game with, and they have to be available at the right time. <laughs> You do, um, <laughs> but uh, it's great to see indies in uh, in such a great place. So yeah, really looking forward to trying it when I find a friend. Yeah, when Tyre gets friends. It uh, looks like you have a friend in the chat because Priscilla is in the chat and she says Tyre with a heart. So there you go. There you go. You've got I a friend play it to play with it takes two with. <laughs> 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 okay, our next news story is about Sony. So the consoles might still be hard to find on store shelves, but it hasn't stopped high demand for alternative colours, especially for the plating for the audacious looking PlayStation 5. Uh, in particular, consumers are really keen on black versions because they would look so much cooler, right? Black is just more like a modern living room appliance and less like a futuristic spaceship. Uh, you might remember we talked about this a while ago. On the, on the, ugh, we talked about this a while ago on the show. Dbrand, a third party, actually got in legal trouble with Sony for selling custom plates themselves, and because of that, we assumed that Sony were making their own. That's now been proved true. They are making their own, and they come in a range of colours, inspired by the Galaxy. Apparently, uh, apparently our Galaxy is purple, pink, blue, red, and black. And you can see the colours in the background there if you're watching the show. Uh, you can also get controllers in the new colours, which is exciting. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's nice to see some variation, I guess, in the PlayStation design. One of the most controversially designed consoles in a while. It was a little bit of a talking point when they first unveiled the design, how, how strange it looked and how unconventional it looked. What do you make of the new colors, Ty? Are you gonna, do you like these colors? I love them. I think it's, uh, it's great to get a bit of color. I think, like you say, the black, I think, is going to be really popular because um, white just gets really dirty. Yeah. And I'm quite surprised they just went forward with the white. Um, so I think I know a lot of people that have had to buy covers for their white console to kind of keep it a little bit fresh. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about the purple and the pink and the blue. I think it's really um, nice to get, you know, 
a more colourful range than we usually used to. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to see how they look. Yeah, I definitely, for me, it's all about the black one. The black one is by far the coolest, but the other colours are cool too. I like that you can express yourselves. And I like anything that harkens back to the classic era of Xbox 360 faceplates. That was the uh, the golden age of game console customization. <laughs> Um, let's do some more shout outs in the chat we have got uh, Tony hey Tony thanks for tuning in and we've got Bianca as well hey. we appreciate you guys tuning in we really appreciate your time um, guys. next up in the news world we're talking about Splinter Cell so according to hiring posts out of Ubisoft Toronto and later confirmed by Ubisoft HQ the Splinter Cell franchise is back they are reportedly remaking the original game uh, so fans have been wondering for a while what Ubisoft was doing with the IP the last title, Blacklist, uh, came out in 2013, and this is going to be a complete remake. So the game will be rebuilt, but will theoretically, I guess, try to respect the legacy of the original, which came out in 2002, and uh, launched the stealth action franchise. Um, I think what's most interesting about this is how recruitment focused it is. Like they, they, this is a game announcement, which doesn't seem to actually be for the fans. It's all about trying to get people to join the team in Ubisoft Toronto. Um, which I guess is maybe isn't surprising. It's becoming increasingly competitive between studios fighting for top talent. Um, and it's one way to attract people is to you know, be like, hey, we're working on this incredible game. Come join the squad. What do you reckon, Ty? Is this going to be a trend we're going to see more of? Games being announced purely for recruitment purposes? I think it's a really interesting move. And I think it'll be interesting to see how that pays off for them. Because you're right, it's very unusual. But I think it will work. Because if I was... Uh, a dev and I was thinking oh do you know what I want to work on a really cool game and a trailer came out just for me It'd be pretty wowed um, like I stupidly mentioned to you earlier I'm not familiar with this game at all <laughs> I wasn't um, gonna I wasn't gonna dob you in I was gonna let people at home not know that you've never you've never like heard of okay. Spencer. <laughs> it's a save my game um, but I'm I'm excited by how excited everyone else is so yeah. I'll definitely be checking it out yeah, I mean, the guy's got three glowing lights on his helmet. You know, what's cooler than that? Everyone wants Nothing. to be. A um, couple of sales-focused stories for you there. We're talking about a couple of indie titles uh, that we're really happy to see have made incredible sales this year. Uh, the first one we're talking about is Unpacking, which we've talked about on the show previously. Uh, relatively new game. It's on Game Pass as well. But they sold 100k in the first 10 days of being on sale, which is phenomenal, especially for a team of, of that size, like that kind of small-scale indie team. Um, so congratulations, really, to everyone involved. And Ty, you're a big Unpacking fan. Do you want to say a little congratulations to the gang behind Unpacking? Always, always want to say congratulations. And, you know, coming from the indie marketing space, I know what an amazing feat getting to that kind of commercial success is for a little indie game. And I think it is in no small part due to the excellent, excellent marketing they've been doing throughout their development. Um, supported, I believe, by Victoria Tran of uh, Kit Fox and Among Us fame as well. Mm. So it's definitely worked out for them. And I can't wait to see what they're going to do next with kind of the success they've seen. Yeah, really fantastic success story. We love to see it. Uh, mm. And like I say, you can play that game on Game Pass if you got it or you can buy it. You can add to their 100k sales they've made so far. And you can uh, have a nice little relaxing afternoon of unpacking boxes yourself in a pixel art world. Um, our next uh, next sales success story this week is about Spiritfarer, which you might remember from last year. We loved it here at Edge Play. It was one of our games of the year of 2020, um, and they have now reached 1 million sales, which is astonishing, really, um, really Downing. incredible. Um, obviously, they've had a while to do that. It came out, you know, mid last year, and they've had over a year, but really incredible numbers that usually would be reserved for, you know, incredibly successful titles. So. Um, I, I'm a big Spiritfarer fan. I think it's such a fantastic game. Like I, I've talked to you before, Ty, about how much I hate doing chores in games. It <laughs> reminds me that I should be doing chores in real life. Spiritfarer is the only game I've ever played where I actually liked doing chores. Um, it's very so high praise. It's a high praise from me. It is definitely one of my <laughs> favourite games of last year, and I'm thrilled to see it get this kind of success. Um, anything you want to add? Uh... I am just really excited to play it. It's on my never-ending list of amazing games that are always coming out, and um, I believe they had a fairly major update recently as Ooh. well. Oh, we need to so jump back in then. Lots of new things to explore, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, hello in the chat to SJ. She says, 
<laughs> she's finally joining us live. It's taken her a year to tune in. We've been telling SJ to watch for <laughs> literally 12 months and she's finally here. Welcome SJ, welcome to the crew. We uh, appreciate you tuning in. Um, next up then, the most fascinating news story of the week, arguably, and it's coming out fresh today. Final Fantasy XIV has been suspended from being sold by Square Enix with the developers because it's basically too successful. Um, <laughs> so for a little bit of backstory, those of you who don't know, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, especially in the past few months, but over the past few years, really, has become the go-to MMORPG. It's kind of become the one people are really excited about. They've taken a lot of customers and consumers away from World of Warcraft, and they recently released the Endwalker expansion, which has only amplified this and made it really, really popular. Um, so Endwalker launched on December 3rd, and players experienced massive queues on login. They just weren't enough servers to cope with it. Basically, the game's too popular to be able to cope with this number of people trying to play at the same time. Uh, and they've been trying to deal with it, they've been trying to expand, they've been trying to, you know, set up sensible queue systems, but ultimately they're saying they just can't make it work. You know, there's a, a chip shortage out there in the world, it's hard to do this stuff very quickly. So what they've decided to do is just stop selling it altogether. It's basically sold out. When was the last time a game sold out when it was in the digital age? It's crazy. Um, the publisher has also granted free play time to people who've been affected by the long load times and, and queues and stuff. Um, but yeah, essentially, you can't buy it now. If you didn't buy it already, you have to wait a while till it goes back on sale. Advertisement campaigns are halted, free trials are halted. Um, and yeah, just a really strange situation to be in. Like we, We've talked before about how the digital age of games has done away with scarcity in the traditional sense. Like you don't have to worry about pre-ordering and, and manufacturing and all those sorts of things, but turns out you can still sell out. Just means you just need to be so popular that there aren't enough servers to put your game on. What do you make of this time? I think it's amazing. I think it's hilarious in a way because, like you say, this is like an unheard of thing in this day and age and I'm really really happy in some ways to see this success coming into them. I personally started playing the game a couple of months ago now so well, you I got in at the right time. I really did and even then I think it was really difficult to even make a character on the realm that I wanted because um, it was just full. Always the realm was full uh, so I definitely got there before it was um, uh, this amazing kind of queuing issue that I've seen online it's ridiculous but it really does show you that even though we can kind of think of scarcity in a very different way you know servers are still physical things and they are the scarcity in this scenario you know the internet isn't yeah. bountiful <laughs> as we really want it to be um, I mean we all know it just lives in a single box single black box so you <laughs> yeah, know you can't really expand it any more than that <laughs> Um, no, I think it's amazing and I'm really hopeful that they'll be able to find a solution to this because it's not easy, like you say, because of COVID with all the shortages and issues with chips and electrical components. Time will tell, you know, what will be, will be. but um, yeah. hopefully it's fixed by the time the Endwalker comes out fully so that mm. I can play it. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to uh, Square Enix, obviously. I mean, until today, the PlayStation 5 was the hardest thing to buy in games. <laughs> now it's Final Fantasy XIV, <laughs> um, which is, yeah, some turn up. But congratulations on all your money that I imagine you're gonna get when you, when you manage to get all the servers back online. Um, if you like the news part of the show, if you like hearing about things from the world of games and our opinions on the world of games, then make sure you check out the Roundup that goes live every Friday at uk.com forward slash play. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the show, we've got one from last week all about the Game Awards with loads of great trailers in it, so check that out as well. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with even more gaming news and uh, talking about all that stuff as well. Um, let's do some more hellos in the chat. Hello, okay, Ben Joy saying to give him a shout out. He's literally on the show, it like, doesn't really count. But hello, Ben Joy, thanks for watching. You're the bit that you're not on. Uh, and hello to uh, Steve as well. Steve says it's taken me almost a year to get an Xbox Series X. One arriving from Microsoft tomorrow. Congratulations, man, on your, on your Xbox. Awesome. Um, we are going to throw to the pre-recorded segment, which this week is a throwback to last Christmas. You're going to cast your minds back all the way. Uh, Emma Budd, who is a friend of the show, challenged me to a race in Crash Team Racing, and I couldn't turn down the challenge. Here's, what, here's how we got on. And stick around, because after this, Ben Joy will be here to talk about the best-selling games of 2021. See you in a few minutes. Bye.
Hello and welcome to another Etch Play video. My name is Adam Burt and I'm joined by Emma Bud. Emma, welcome to Crash Team Racing. Thank you for having me. That's okay. We, we've we been racing. Uh, we've been racing each other. You actually won our last race on this very track, Gingerbread Joyride, our, our little practice you, uh, run. There. You won quite, quite a few before that, so... Uh. <laughs> So now we're going to play publicly in front of the whole world for all the marbles. Basically, this is this is the challenge. This is the the clash of the titans, or oh, the crash of the titans. Maybe I'll call the video that. Um, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to go to customization. I'm going to confirm. I want to play as a polar bear in some sort of spaceship, and I'm going to press start game. Who are you playing as? Is that like buff Crash Bandicoot? I can't. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. It's not Coco, is it? No, Coco is his sister. Yeah. That oh, would be oh, like... it's Crunch Bandicoot. That's it. Yeah, it was some word beginning with C. <laughs> C, C word Bandicoot. Bandicoot. It's a Christmas Bandicoot. Christmas um, Bandicoot. Yep. Appropriate. It's a faster version of Crash Bandicoot, which is what I need. Because, okay. Uh, what about the speed? So you got it set to speed. Um, this this level's hard. There's jelly jumping around. There's it's festive ginger treats, ginger. gingerbread. You know, I'm I'm not good at this one. We it's will see. It's good fun, this one. Yeah. Um. Got candy canes in there. It's yeah, it's pure Christmas. Meant for this record, really. That's a chocolate fountain. You were saying before that uh, you sometimes play kart races with your family at Christmas. Will you be playing this one, do you think? Yeah, I think we might play this on Christmas Day. Although, um, Christmas Day's been and gone, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> at the time you stay fly. Yeah. We'll just see. With the power yeah. of recording <laughs> video, this is going out <laughs> after Christmas. Every but it's time not I yet being Christmas. Video, it's after Christmas. Someone ruins the uh, magic of the illusion. <laughs> the time. I'm sorry for doing that, but it is just before Christmas now. I'm hoping to get Mario Kart for the Switch for Christmas, but I just couldn't wait and uh, got myself crash team racing, which I've really been doing. It's so hard though. Yes, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's harder than Mario Kart for sure. Much harder than Mario Kart. Um, I mean, fun. you're currently winning again. I am. I'm, I'm about to hit by a missile. They not know how cute I am. I'm a little polar bear. <laughs> you need to be a buff version of Crash Bandicoot, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I need to be Crunch Bandicoot. He's where it's at. Oh, I nearly got hit by the jelly. We're playing here on the Nintendo Switch, but this game is available on every console you can care to name in 2020. Yeah, what I used to play it on when I was. You play it a lot as a teenager at uh, one of my friends' houses, wasn't that? Was PS2? Yeah, or PlayStation 1, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, yep, classic kart racer brought back to life uh, by Beanox Studios. Ooh, where am I? I'm in the sky somewhere. I'm not even top three again. What's <laughs> happening to me on this course? I mean, I'm going to need you to tell people. I'm going to need you to get. You can't fall off the edge on this course either. So. I'm going to need you to like sign something that says that you've seen me win races before this one. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you drifting a lot? Is that how you're getting yeah, speed? Yeah, I do a lot of drifting. Okay, I think that's I the. I throw my cart around all these courses. That's why I'm not very good at the ones where you can fall off the side. Well, this is a very drift-heavy course. It's like having the bumpers up on bowling. Oh, I. Can't really you know when you've got the bumpers after you play bowling you just have to get the <laughs> yeah. ball down there. <laughs> you don't worry about any kind of skill, you just uh, cheer for. So that's me playing Crash Team Racing. Okay, I've made it into third place. I'm on the podium. So far. Tell these lumps of jelly at the side of the track want me to win. They're cheering for me. Yeah, I didn't they were going to come out and get you like some kind of plant. You're miles away. Maybe it's just because it's a Christmas course. Love Christmas. Yeah. Well, the magic of Christmas is clearly. Yeah, that's it. 
flowing There's through a, you. There's a really cool dinosaur course that I want to play. Okay, we'll play that one after the recording. I like, which one do I like? I like the one that's like fast food restaurant in space. We played that one. I never have actually. We'll find that I've played a lot of the, uh, the easy ones. Yeah, I played the hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> I just say event. I'm playing adventure raid at the moment, so I'm doing all the easies. There it is. Yeah, Emma Bud, the official champion of Crash Bandicoot. Or Crash Team Racing, I should say, rather. For the Nintendo Switch. <sighs> Man. Adam wins everything normally, so this is quite, quite impressive. This is a Christmas miracle. <laughs> I mean, you won that one last time we played it as well. Gingerbread Joyride, that's definitely yeah, your that's... track my jam i've only played it once before as well i haven't been practicing okay well let's uh good game we'll take a look at the podium here and get let you do your little celebration whatever crunch bandicoot feels like doing if it ever loads significant load times but quite good at christmas gives you time to reach for some more snacks yeah it does, it does do that it gives you tips while it's loading as well, so there we go. Look at me flexing my muscles. That, yep, yeah, that's you all over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for destroying me at Crash Team Racing, Emma Bud. I've been Adam Burt, and we will see you on a future Etch Play video. Thanks for watching, and have a very happy new year. See ya! Hey, welcome back. You're watching the Etch Play Weekly Live Show, this week hosted by me, Adam Bett. And you might be wondering if you've been watching since the start of the show, why Ben Joy doesn't look like Ben Joy. And that's because we're experiencing some technical difficulties, which means Ben's not able to currently join us. However, it does mean that you get an even better last part of the show. It's a double helping of Tyre. Tyre, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> it's going well. I'm excited. Oh, Ben. I'm sorry, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's in the chat doing sad faces. Um, we're going to talk about what Ben was going to talk about, but somehow without Ben, uh, which is going to be fun. Um, we're going to talk about the best-selling games of 2021. We're going to be talking about some of the best-selling titles of this year, and I guess what makes them tick, like why we think they've been such a huge success this year. Um, and what some of our potential takeaways might be, if we can think of any on the spot. Um, but, you know, it's a live show, live TV, baby. Anything can happen. <laughs> uh, should we have a chat about Call of Duty first, Ty? Yes, let's. So, according to our sources, um, <laughs> Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is our number one of top selling video games of. 2021? 2021. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, followed very closely by Call of Duty Vanguard. Yeah, so and I thought this was interesting, yeah, because I saw this in the data and I was like, it really just shows Call of Duty's dominance as a franchise that they could pull this off, basically <laughs> occupying number, number one slot and number two slot at the same time. Um, why do we think Call of Duty is such an enduring name? Like, there's obviously this is a household name, quite literally. If you say Call of Duty, everyone's heard of it. Is it also about the consistency? You know, they release this every year, basically, and it always does well. Uh, is there is there a level of quality there that consumers have come to expect that maybe making it a little bit easier for them? I think so. I think, like you say, it is a household name, and it's one of those games, that, one of those franchises that you know there's going to be a new one pretty much every year. You know it's going to have the same gameplay loop that you love uh, if you've played other Call of Duty games. Um, and I'm personally not someone who's played a lot of Call of Duty, but from what I understand, they're always adding new stuff, new mechanics, new really cool graphics and things like that to it. Um, so it's like you're getting your favorite game, but even better year after year with new content. And I think that mm -hmm. keeps people coming back. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's a really incredible achievement, like we say, to occupy those top two slots like that. and. Uh, well done to everyone, Activision, I guess, involved. Uh, lots of devs and lots of studios under that Activision umbrella work on these titles, which must be very hard. I know we've talked at length, we've talk, spoken at length, I should say, about Activision's culture recently, and we, we hope that the people who are involved in making these products don't have to go through that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, 
obviously successful games. There is a lot of money behind them. Um, give us another game from the list, Ty. Pick one. You can go in order. You can go at random. Doesn't matter. We're we're off pasture here. Uh, I probably should have started with number ten and worked my way up. I just realised. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. But it's too late now. Um, in number three, we have the Madden NFL 22 by EA, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting to see. I believe that's. Um, the only sports game on the list? It might well be, yeah. So, interesting to see that. I would have expected maybe some others to be on there, but that is the mm. number three spot there for us. Um, yeah, I mean, Madden is... I mean, you talk about consistency. <laughs> There's consistency. The game is extremely similar every year, but obviously people are invested in it as a franchise. They want to buy the new game every year. Um, it's... Yeah, it's a massive, you know, in the, in the same way that FIFA is here, Madden is popular across the whole of North America. Um, and Ben is now telling us in the chat that MLB The Show is also in the list, so it's not the only sports game, that's baseball. Two American sports. Just had sports. to Google it. Yeah. <laughs> coming, coming up in the list. Um, Thank you, Ben. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, yeah I mean, and sports I mean, games... Uh, a huge part of the sales every year they you know they don't they don't maybe do well critically they don't necessarily enter the discourse online about where games are going and, and what games is doing but they do sell and they're obviously a big part of a lot of people's video gaming lives and a part of video gaming culture as a whole sure and you know as a as a standard buyer it's always interesting to see the improvements they're making i mean Nowadays, you know, the gameplay loops are pretty much figured out. The games kind of know what they're doing. But what's amazing to see year after year is just how realistic they can push it to the point where sometimes I'll watch like someone play uh, an NFL game or a FIFA game. And I'm like, are those like real people? Like they look just amazing. So the kinds of things that they're doing in these games, um, you know, we don't really see in others uh, due to the, the constraints of other genres. Yeah. but. But yeah, well done to EA. Congrats, EA. You continue to make a lot of money. <laughs> Hit us with some more games, Ty. What else is on the list? So, uh, as Ben rightly says, that was not the only sports game on our list. We also have MLB The Show 21, which is an American baseball game. I've never heard of it myself, so it must be something that's quite popular in America, I'm guessing. Um, yeah. I think in the UK, we don't really follow um, baseball to that extent. Um, but again, I think similarly, great to see that um, you know, that genre is still kind of performing quite well. Mm. Um, and this one is made by Sony, um, which is probably part of why, you know, it's, I'm assuming it's a very good game. Sony usually brings out pretty good games. Yeah, there's an interesting story actually about the release of this game, which is that despite it being developed by Sony, it was released on day one on Xbox Game Pass on the Xbox, um, oh. which was uh, yeah a surprising turn of events. And we've talked before about the you know the impact that Game Pass can have on sales. This is you know proof of there ever was it. I think this is probably the highest rated game that was day one Game Pass in terms of that sales chart. I think. Um, but Maybe. it proves that you don't necessarily lose all your sales just by giving it away on certain platforms. Um, or it's not giving it away. You do get paid for being on Game Pass. It's not free. <laughs> um, but it just goes to show that it is maybe a, a viable method of getting your game into more hands that, that more games should be considering if Microsoft comes calling. Sure. Sure. What's next? Next we car. have... Uh... Is it <laughs> outside constantly? Resident Evil Village by mm. Capcom, which I think we all probably would have expected in this list, uh, uh, and I think we rightly see in it. Would I have expected this in the list? I don't know if I would, actually. I mean, it is a classic franchise, but not every Resident Evil game is as well received as this one, and I think, actually, what's interesting about Resident Evil Village, um, I, I, it deserves its success, absolutely. I think it's a, a great game, but... It's one of only a few AAA games that managed to come out during that time when most games were still getting delayed due to the pandemic. And I think it, more than most, really benefited from kind of a wider open field of just being like, hey, it's what's out this month? Nothing but Resident Evil if you're, in, if you're looking for like a AAA title. Um, so I think that was uh, exciting for people. It also, you know, people got new consoles late last year if they could in, in, the, in the sales shortages. 
but if you did have one you probably wanted games for it and then wasn't maybe a lot of games around like we say so i think it has benefited from those things i mean resident evil does sell well uh, especially globally um mm. but yeah i think this i think this one is a is a success beyond even what they would usually have imagined so good for them for sure and i think partly as well some of that success can be tied back to their marketing campaign which i think even to them went performed so much better than they expected um i'm sure most of us remember the frenzy on twitter when they first released the uh lady d dimitrescu um, dimitrescu Dimitri dimitrescu i can't pronounce it i know what she looks like i can't pronounce her name <laughs> the tall vampire lady the tall vampire um, lady yeah yeah when they released that trailer you know it was all over the internet it became a huge meme it became everything everyone was talking about and i think they really rode that high and they really kind of capitalized on that um mm without that kind of uh, peak of the popularity of the game, I don't know if we would have seen them on this list. So it's a, a very interesting... Um, you is silent, apparently. So I think Dimitrescu. I was... When I said Dim Dimitrescu, I think might be might be correct, but I could be making that up. Well, um, if it was proper Romanian, you would pronounce the U, but for some reason in the game, they don't. Yeah. It's just my tidbit of... The, the zombies ate the letter U from the alphabet. They don't have any <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's Resident Evil. Next we have Battlefield 2042, another popular, popular shooter um, IP there, mm -hmm. uh, which again saw a lot of excitement, a lot of uh, marketing push, really great trailers as they always have. Um, I personally am super intrigued by the tornadoes, I just think they're the <laughs> coolest thing ever. Um, <laughs> Can I just play a map where it's there's no one, no one with guns? I just want to see the tornadoes. Let's just play against a tornado. Like I'm not <laughs> huge on shooters, but I would fight a tornado. Um, you heard it here first, exclusive. <laughs> You're right about the trailers, uh, though. The trailers for this are really strong, and they do include those really like good. cinematic moments, like the tornado. Um, you know, like the kind of frenetic combat they can do with all those dozens of players all at the same time. Really strong trailers and really strong engine as well under the hood there they've got making that game work. I know it's had a slightly rocky launch from a uh, bug perspective, but that's classic Battlefield and uh, probably expect them to turn that around and to, uh, the game to be, continue to be popular into next year, I would imagine. For sure. And just like Call of Duty, you know, it's a staple in, mm. uh, in people's libraries. Uh, quite often, people who enjoy one will enjoy the other. I think it's actually quite rare for people to be like, I will only play COD or I will only play Battlefield um, because they do similar things very well. Um, so, yeah, cool to see that. That's another EA game. So, we've got two from EA. Um, the next couple are from Nintendo, which is great to see because mm. it was great to see Nintendo on our lists. In number seven, we have Super Mario 3D World. Yeah. And what's the next one as well? And Pokemon Brilliant Diamond slash Shining Pearl, which came uh, out yeah. quite recently. It's quite recent. I mean, there's a couple of things going on here, isn't there? I mean, one, Nintendo has such a high bar of quality, um, mm. which you just you just kind of rely on things that come from Nintendo to be good. They very rarely release something that's genuinely bad. But I think this is also reflective of a couple of things. It's reflective of those iconic characters they've built, Mario, Pokemon, two incredible franchises in their own right, massive multimedia franchises, really. Um, that have been, you know, built alongside Nintendo, uh, but I think it's also mm -hmm. reflective of Switch's dominance. You know, like the amount of Switches that are sold is just crazy to me. Like, there's still so many of them being sold all the time, and if you're going to get a Nintendo console of any kind, including the Switch, what do you want? You want Mario? You want Pikachu? <laughs> Done. <laughs> um, so I think I think it's really reflective of that, and just yeah, I can I can picture now all these people walking out of the store with their bundles, you know, with their 3D world in there, and picking up the new Pokemon and all those sorts of things. Although it's actually it's a remaster, isn't it, of an older Pokemon game? It's for sure, and I think you're right. You know, the the nostalgia factor for these games is just enormous. Um, you know, most people in the world have played or at least have heard of these kind of IPs. They've experienced them in different ways and they are so special to so many people in the world. So it's great to see them on there. Um, I'm really excited to pick up Pokemon Brilliant Diamonds slash Shining Pearl. Not sure which one yet. 
uh, when I get round to it and kind of experience that anew. Um, but yeah, great to see them on there. Tell us in the chat, should Taya get diamond or pearl? We'll, put, we'll let Good. you decide. And whatever you choose, I will force her to buy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, round oh, off. Sorry, go I don't ahead. have a preference. You don't have a preference. Round have a preference. off the list for us. <laughs> I like uh, SJ's suggestion of both. <laughs> I think that, you know, if we're using our uh, play money, I think we should get both. Yeah, we'll get down to the money. <laughs> Uh, to round off, we've got another game from Sony, and that is Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, which mm. is really great to see on this list because I know so many people that would class this as their game of the year, the best game that came out, um, heard some amazing things. Um, I believe it's a PlayStation exclusive, is that right? It is, but you can play it on the PlayStation 4 as well as the 5, so it's uh, uh -huh. that's probably contributing to the high sales numbers here, because if it was PS5 exclusive, wouldn't be enough, wouldn't be enough consoles in the world to play it on. Um, yeah, sadly I don't have a PS anything so yeah. i will have to wait until maybe one day they'll put it on pc uh but i've just yeah it just looks like an amazing amazing game amazing story amazing cast um yeah. the web physics look really cool uh having yeah. watched some videos yeah i mean i don't know if you've noticed but spider-man's kind of having a moment right now he's everywhere mm. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of spider-man out there and i say <laughs> bring it on <laughs> give me more spider-man you listening more <laughs> Um, Never enough Spider-Man. There is, of course, more Spider-Man coming. We are expecting Marvel Spider-Man 2 to launch at some point in the next couple of years for the PlayStation 5, which will star both Miles Morales and the originals uh, Peter Parker as well. Um, cool. Is that the end of our list? Then we just have one more. Oh, I can't Number count. 10. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have a Ubisoft game here, and that is Far Cry 6, mm. um, which is lower than I would have expected it, actually. Yeah, it's interesting. I guess it's maybe, I mean, it's obviously still incredibly successful to even make the top 10, but it's an interesting contrast with the, with the way that Call of Duty is able to maintain its dominance, whereas mm. Far Cry is maybe still familiar, still interesting, still sells really well. But maybe there's an element of diminishing returns there. They're maybe not reaching the heights that they could have reached in, in previous titles. Um, I know Dan Thomas, who's part of the X-Play team, loves Far Cry 6. He's been playing it and we'll be talking about it more next week, potentially, in our Game of the Year discussions. Um, but I think that's, uh, yeah, sounds like a, a good achievement for them. But we know they could potentially do even more with, uh, with the right tools to, to build the next one. The marketing was interesting, wasn't it? Because I remember there was a bit of a uh, <coughs> bit of a conversation, I guess, about the the marketing, the email remarketing that went to people who played the game. Did you get any of this? Do you read about this? Yes, it was an interesting one, I think. So, uh, what you're referring to there is that they've got some kind of um, tracking software on your playtime so that if you stopped playing for a number of days, they would send you an email saying like, "Hey." Uh, what's the place called? Is it Yara? Yeah, I think it's the villain. It's like the villain emails you like, thanks, <laughs> I win. <laughs> like, <laughs> thanks you, for uh, letting the baddies win. Which yeah, exactly. <laughs> very interesting from a marketing point of view. You know, it got a lot of backlash. Uh, it got a lot of backlash. But I think it's it's interesting to kind of see. You know, when they say you know any attention is good attention. Uh, I think from that point of view, I think maybe they probably got a, an overall kind of benefit from kind of the way that people were talking about it, etc. Yeah. Um, I thought it was an interesting idea. I'm not sure if I agree with kind of the implementation of it, because um, it's a little bit kind of like, okay, well, you know, not everyone has time to, to play a game every single day. Um, and yeah. personally, I'm, I'm very, I have very strong feelings about games that make you feel like you're missing out if you're not logging in every day. I think mm. that's just not right. Trying to uh, engineering FOMO. Basically, like using that kind of psychology um, is not, not great, in my opinion. Ben's um, in the chat but... saying he loves it, so you guys are going to have a fight now off, off air. <laughs> Me and Ben are going to You're going to throw down. <laughs> Next I think week, it's an tune in idea. to find out which one of them survives. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um, on I tire, think absolutely. definitely helps extend the experience. I think, I think it's a good idea. I think they should have thought it through a bit more, mm. um, just because I think 
I, I think we would have kind of foreseen the backlash potentially. Yeah. Um,